Hi, welcome back. Requirements Engineering. Today, it's all about goals. So, what is a goal? The definition for a goal, the simplest one that I found is it is a statement of intent. And as we do requirements engineering for software intensive systems, those goals will have to do on some level with a system under development. Mind you, little sidetrack, you may be able to use techniques that you learn in this course in requirements engineering in all areas of your life, certainly in all areas concerning your business life. We've applied requirements engineering techniques to policy making, to business case analysis, to finance. It works in a lot of areas. So don't limit it to software engineering, even though for this course we focus on software engineering. Now, goals. So we have three major types of goals. We have business goals. We have usage goals. And we have system goals. You already see there are three levels. Yeah, <laughs> we're back to three levels. Now the question is what do each of these types of goals focus on? Business goals focus on the business context of your system. So it's not so much about how the system is going to work as opposed to what you want to achieve with that system in a larger context in the business environment. So your business goals may say something like, we want to have a return on investment, well, we want to have the development costs back in three months after releasing the product. And further on, we plan on earning a million dollars within the first year. Clearly a business goal. This one doesn't even give us a clue. We're not going to Rio, this is return on investment. Um, this one does not even give us a hint about what our system is about. And that is something you frequently find in business goals. They don't necessarily state something about the actual business. So let's use a second example, something that does say what the system is going to be about. So we want to take over 30% of market for online sales, product sales. That is a pretty lofty goal. It's just an example. So. We do want to do online product sales. We want to be a major competitor for Amazon because right now they are clearly number one. Now, after establishing the business goals with your stakeholder, you want to move on into defining the usage goals. So the usage goals, as opposed to talking about the business context, refer to impact in business context. They state what the user will want to accomplish with the system. So for example, they want to be able to buy and ship quickly and safe.
and number two, they want to be able to return products. So if you think back to the little lecture about problem orientation and solution orientation, here we are still on the, on the problem level. We don't talk about the solution yet. On the third level for the system goals, we may have an idea of what the solution is going to look like. We are going to define some goals that are going to constrain the solution. So that may be something like uses encryption for user data. Because we said that one of the usage goals is we want to be able to buy safe, quickly and safely. So we need to be able to protect our user data. And then a second one may be for easily returning products, allow for label printing. And where we go after defining the goals on the three levels is into an analysis of what is the relationship between those goals. So we will start by making a hierarchy. So up here we have a business goal and then, well, in our case, we had two. And then here we have the usage goals. One, two. So both of those are derived from that business goal number two. We want to take over the market for online product sales. This is our overall goal model. We have one root which is the system goal, uh, sorry, the, the goal of developing that system. And then the system goal of we want to use encryption is derived from user goal one. And number two is derived from usage goal two. So we make that traceable to know at the end, when we've broken up, down all those things and somebody asks back, it's like, that encryption software module costs us so much money, like, why do we even need that? I know in this example, it's slightly obvious, but imagine you've broken down requirements over, say, seven to 10 levels, and they are so fine grained that it is not entirely obvious anymore where it came from. And then you can trace back in your goal hierarchy and say, oh, this is why we did that, and this is why we did that, and this is why we did that. So you're good. The other part where you want to analyze those goals is you want to find out whether there are any conflicts. And a very typical conflict that you may be able to detect in many goal models is the conflict in between time and quality. So you know there is this development triangle of time, cost, cost, and quality. And conflicts are often due to that one. Now, the cynical business consultant says, time, quality, cost, pick two. You can only have two. But the truth is that we want to find the trade-off somewhere in the middle. So we know what is more pressing. For example, we develop the next funky little app that gets people totally addicted to their game. Maybe quality is not as important and we are willing to invest a little bit more. Like if, if that app crashes every once in a while, so what? It's just a game local on your phone. Cost, okay, we know that everything is about the time to market with this type of product. So we know that the emphasis is going to lie here. However, if we design an airplane instead, quality, yeah, we would rather not have that thing fall from the sky. We want to make sure that it's developed 
with really high quality standards that it's absolutely safe. And for that, we acknowledge that it will take more time and it will be more expensive. So depending on the type of system you develop, you know where you have to go for your trade-off. That's it for today's. That's the story about goals.